Chapter 8. The sun was up so high when I waked that I judged it was after 8 o'clock. I laid there in the grass and the cool shade thinking about things, and feeling rested and Ruther comfortable and satisfied. I could see the sun out at one or two holes, but mostly it was big trees all about, and gloomy in there amongst them. There was freckled places on the ground where the light sifted down through the leaves, and the freckled places swapped about a little, showing there was a little breeze up there. A couple of squirrels sat on a limb and jabbered at me very friendly. I was powerful lazy and comfortable didn't want to get up and cook breakfast. Well. I was dozing off again when I thinks I hears a deep sound of boom. Away up the river, I rouses up, and rests on my elbow and listens pretty soon I hears it again. I hopped up, and went and looked out at a hole in the leaves, and I see a bunch of smoke laying on the water a long ways up about abreast the ferry. And there was the ferryboat full of people floating along down. I knowed what was the matter now. Boom! I see the white smoke squirt out of the ferryboat's side. You see, they was firing cannon over the water, trying to make my carcass come to the top. I was pretty hungry, but it warn't going to do for me to start a fire because they might see the smoke. So I sat there and watched the cannon smoke and listened to the boom. The river was a mile wide there, and it always looks pretty on a summer morning so I was having a good enough time seeing them hunt for my remainders if I only had a bite to eat. Well, then I happened to think how they always put quicksilver in loaves of bread and float them off, because they always go right to the drowned carcass and stop there. So, says I, I'll keep a lookout, and if any of them's floating around after me I'll give them a show. I changed to the Illinois edge of the island to see what luck I could have, and I warn't disappointed. A big double loaf come along, and I most got it with a long stick. But my foot slipped and she floated out further. Of course I was where the current set in the closest to the shore I knowed enough for that. But by and by along comes another one, and this time I won. I took out the plug and shook out the little dab of quicksilver and set my teeth in. It was baker's bread what the quality eat none of your low-down corn pone. I got a good place amongst the leaves, and sat there on a log, munching the bread and watching the ferry boat, and very well satisfied. And then something struck me. I says, now I reckon the widow or the parson or somebody prayed that this bread would find me, and here it has gone and done it. So there ain't no doubt but there is something in that thing that is, there's something in it when a body like the widow or the parson prays, but it don't work for me, and I reckon it don't work for only just the right kind. I lit a pipe and had a good long smoke, and went on watching. The ferry boat was floating with the current, and I allowed I'd have a chance to see who was aboard when she come along, because she would come in close, where the bread did. When she'd got pretty well along down towards me, I put out my pipe and went to where I fished out the bread and laid down behind a log on the bank in a little open place. Where the log forked I could peep through. By and by she come along, and she drifted in so close that they could a run out a plank and walked ashore. 
most everybody was on the boat. Pap, and Judge Thatcher, and Bessie Thatcher, and Joe Harper, and Tom Sawyer, and his old Aunt Polly, and Sid and Mary, and plenty more. Everybody was talking about the murder, but the captain broke in and says, Look sharp. Now the current sets in the closest here. And maybe he's washed ashore and got tangled amongst the brush at the water's edge. I hope so, anyway. I didn't hope so. They all crowded up and leaned over the rails, nearly in my face, and kept still, watching with all their might. I could see them first rate, but they couldn't see me. Then the captain sung out, Stand away! And the cannon let off such a blast right before me that it made me deep with the noise and pretty near blind with the smoke, and I judged I was gone. If they'd a had some bullets in, I reckon they'd a got the corpse they was after. Well, I see I warn't hurt, thanks to goodness. The boat floated on and went out of sight around the shoulder of the island. I could hear the booming now and then, further and further off, and by and by, after an hour, I didn't hear it no more. The island was three mile long. I judged they had got to the foot, and was giving it up. But they didn't yet a while. They turned around the foot of the island and started up the channel on the Missouri side, under steam, and booming once in a while as they went. I crossed over to that side and watched them. When they got abreast the head of the island they quit shooting and dropped over to the Missouri shore and went home to the town. I knowed I was all right now. Nobody else would come a-hunting after me. I got my traps out of the canoe and made me a nice camp in the thick woods. I made a kind of a tent out of my blankets to put my things under so the rain couldn't get at them. I catched a catfish and haggled him open with my saw, and towards sundown I started my campfire and had supper. Then I set out a line to catch some fish for breakfast. When it was dark I sat by my campfire smoking, and feeling pretty well satisfied but by and by it got sort of lonesome, and so I went and sat on the bank and listened to the current swashing along, and counted the stars and drift logs and rafts that come down and then went to bed there ain't no better way to put in time when you are lonesome you can't stay so, you soon get over it. And so for three days and nights. No difference just the same thing. But the next day I went exploring around down through the island. I was boss of it it all belonged to me, so to say, and I wanted to know all about it, but mainly I wanted to put in the time. I found plenty strawberries, ripe and prime and green summer grapes, and green raspberries and the green blackberries was just beginning to show. They would all come handy by and by, I judged. Well, I went fooling along in the deep woods till I judged I warn't far from the foot of the island. I had my gun along, but I hadn't shot nothing it was for protection thought I would kill some game nigh home. About this time I mighty near stepped on a good-sized snake, and it went sliding off through the grass and flowers, and I after it, trying to get a shot at it. I clipped along, and all of a sudden I bounded right onto the ashes of a campfire that was still smoking. My heart jumped up amongst my lungs. I never waited for to look further, 
but uncocked my gun and went sneaking back on my tiptoes as fast as ever I could. Every now and then I stopped a second amongst the thick leaves and listened. But my breath come so hard I couldn't hear nothing else. I slunk along another piece further, then listened again and so on, and so on. If I see a stump, I took it for a man if I trod on a stick and broke it. It made me feel like a person had cut one of my breaths in two and I only got half, and the short half, too. When I got to camp one weren't feeling very brash. There weren't much sand in my craw but I says, this ain't no time to be fooling around. So I got all my traps into my canoe again so as to have them out of sight. And I put out the fire and scattered the ashes around to look like an old last year's camp. And then clum a tree. I reckon I was up in the tree two hours but I didn't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing I only thought I heard and seen as much as a thousand things. Well, I couldn't stay up there forever so at last I got down. But I kept in the thick woods and on the lookout all the time. All I could get to eat was berries and what was left over from breakfast. By the time it was night I was pretty hungry. So when it was good and dark I slid out from shore before moonrise and paddled over to the Illinois bank about a quarter of a mile. I went out in the woods and cooked a supper, and I had about made up my mind I would stay there all night when I hear a plunkety plunk, plunkety plunk, and says to myself, horses coming and next I hear people's voices. I got everything into the canoe as quick as I could, and then went creeping through the woods to see what I could find out. I hadn't got far when I hear a man say, We better camp here if we can find a good place the horses is about beat out. Let's look around. I didn't wait, but shoved out and paddled away easy. I tied up in the old place, and reckoned I would sleep in the canoe. I didn't sleep much. I couldn't, somehow, for thinking. And every time I waked up I thought somebody had me by the neck. So the sleep didn't do me no good. By and by I says to myself. I can't live this way I'm a going to find out who it is that's here on the island with me I'll find it out or bust. Well, I felt better right off. So I took my paddle and slid out from shore just a step or two, and then let the canoe drop along down amongst the shadows. The moon was shining, and outside of the shadows it made it most as light as day. I poked along well on to an hour, everything still as rocks and sound asleep. Well, by this time I was most down to the foot of the island. A little ripply, cool breeze begun to blow, and that was as good as saying the night was about done. I give her a turn with the paddle and brung her nose to shore, then I got my gun and slipped out and into the edge of the woods. I sat down there on a log, and looked out through the leaves. I see the moon go off watch, and the darkness begin to blanket the river. But in a little while I see a pale streak over the treetops, and know the day was coming. So I took my gun and slipped off towards where I had run across that campfire, stopping every minute or two to listen. But I hadn't no luck somehow I couldn't seem to find the place. But by and by, sure enough, I catched a glimpse of fire away through the trees. I went for it, cautious and slow. 
By and by I was close enough to have a look, and there laid a man on the ground. It most give me the fan tods. He had a blanket around his head, and his head was nearly in the fire. I sat there behind a clump of bushes, in about six foot of him, and kept my eyes on him steady. It was getting grey daylight now. Pretty soon he gapped and stretched himself and hove off the blanket, and it was Miss Watson's gym. I bet I was glad to see him. I says, hello, Jim, and skipped out. He bounced up and stared at me wild. Then he drops down on his knees, and puts his hands together and says, Don't, hurt me don't. I hain't ever done no harm to a ghost. I always liked dead people, and done all I could for him. You go and get in de river again. Wa you belongs. And don't, do nothing to a old Jim. At, ooze a w lose yo, friend. Well, I warn't long making him understand I warn't dead. I was ever so glad to see Jim. I warn't lonesome now. I told him I warn't afraid of him telling the people where I was. I talked along, but he only sat there and looked at me never said nothing. Then I says, It's good daylight. Please get breakfast. Make up your camp fire good. What's to use er makin' up de camp fire to cook strawberries and sitch truck? But you got a gun, hain't you? Den we kin get sumf and better den strawberries. Strawberries and such truck, I says. Is that what you live on? I could en, get nothin' else he says. Why, how long you been on the island, Jim? I come hey a de night arter you's killed. What, all that time? Yes indeedy. And ain't you had nothing but that kind of rubbish to eat? No, saw nothing else. Well, you must be most starved, ain't you? I reckon I could eat a hoss. I think I could. How long you been on de Islin? Since the night I got killed. No. We. What has you lived on? But you got a gun. Oh, yes, you got a gun. Dat's good. Now you kill S-U-M-F-N and all make up de fire. So we went over to where the canoe was and while he built a fire in a grassy open place amongst the trees, I fetched meal and bacon and coffee, and coffee pot and frying pan, and sugar and tin cups, and the nigger was set back considerable, because he reckoned it was all done with witchcraft. I catched a good big catfish, too, and Jim cleaned him with his knife, and fried him. When breakfast was ready we lolled on the grass and eat it smoking hot. Jim laid it in with all his might, for he was most about starved. Then when we had got pretty well stuffed, we laid off and lazied. By and by Jim says, But Lukey here, Huck, who was it dat? Oo's killed in dat shanty e f it warn't you. Then I told him the whole thing, and he said it was smart. He said Tom Sawyer couldn't get up no better plan than what I had. Then I says, How do you come to be here, Jim, and how'd you get here? He looked pretty uneasy, and didn't say nothing for a minute. Then he says, maybe I'd better not tell. Why, Jim? Well, day's reasons. 
but you wouldn't tell on me if I ooze to tell you, would you, Huck? Blamed if I would, Jim. Well, I believe you, Huck. I I run off, Jim. But mind, you said you wouldn't. Tell you no you said you wouldn't. Tell, Huck. Well, I did. I said I wouldn't, and I'll stick to it. Honest Injun, I will. People would call me a low-down abolitionist and despise me for keeping mum, but that don't make no difference. I ain't a going to tell, and I ain't a going back there, anyways. So, now, please know all about it. Well, you see, it ooze dis way. Ol' Mrs. Dat's Miss Watson she pecks on me all de time. And treats me pooty rough. But she A.W. Lou said she wouldn't sell me down to Orleans. But I noticed day was a nigger trader round de place considerable lately. And I begin to get oneasy. Well, one night I creeps to de do. Pooty late. And de do. Warn't quite shet. And I hear old missus tell de witter she gwin to sell me down to Orleans. But she didn't want to. But she could get eight hundred dollars for me. And it. Ooh sich a big stack o oh money she could en. Reeses's. De witter she try to get her to say she wouldn't do it. But I never waited to hear de res. I lit out mighty quick, I tell you. I tuck out en shin down de hill, en speck to steal a skift, long de show. Summers, bove de town. But de was people a stirring why I tea. So I hid in de ol' tumble-down cooper shop on de bank to wait for everybody to go way. Well, I was da all night. Day was somebody round, all de time. Long bout six in de monin skifts begin to go by, and bout eight er nine every skift dat went. Long was talkin' bout how yo, Pap come over to de town and say you's killed. Desse lost skifts was full o' ladies and genmen a goin' over for to see de place. Sometimes dade pull up at de show. And take a res beefo. Day started a crossed. So by de talk I got to know all bout de killin'. I, oos powerful sorry you's killed. Huck, but I ain't no mo, now. I laid da under de shavens all day. I, ooze hungry, but I warn't afeard because eh, I knowed ol' Mrs. N. de Witter was goin' to start to de camp meetin' right arter breakfasts and be gone all day. And day knows I goes off wid de cattle bout daylight. So day wouldn't. Speck to see me round, de place. And so day wouldn't miss me tell arter dark in de evenin. De yother servants wouldn't miss me. Kays dade shin out and take holiday soon as de ol' folks ooze out and de way. Well, when it come dark I tuck out up de river road. And went bout two mile or more to wa day warned no houses. I'd made up my mind bout what I's agwin to do. You see, e f i k e p on tryin to get away afoot. Da dogs, you'd track me e f i stole a skift to cross over. Dade miss dat skift. You see. And dade no bout wa I'd lan, on de yother side, and wa to pick up my track. So I says, a raff is what I's arter it don, make no track. I see a light a comin round, de pint by me by, 
so I weighed, in and shove, a log ahead o me and swum more and half way across de river, and got in, monks de drift wood, and kep, my head down low, and kinder swum again de current till de raft come along. Den I swum to de stern uv it and tuck a holt. It clouded up and ooze pooty dark for a little while. So I clum up and laid down on de planks. De men, ooze all, way yonder in de middle, wa de lantern was. De river was a risen. And day was a good current so I reckoned at by foe, in de manan I'd be twenty-five mile down de river. And den I'd slip in G's beefo. Daylight and swim asho, and take to de woods on de Illinois side. But I didn't have no luck. When we ooze most down to de head er de islin, a man begin to come aft wid de lantern. I see it warned no use fair to wait, so I slid overboard and struck out fair de islin. Well, I had a notion I could land, most anywheres, but I couldn't bank to bluff. I, ooze most to de foot er de islin, beefo, I found, a good place. I went into de woods and judged I wouldn't fool wid rafts no mo. Long as day moved de lantern round, so. I had my pipe and a plug or dog leg. And some matches in my cap. And day warn't wet. So I, ooze all right. And so you ain't had no meat nor bread to eat all this time? Why didn't you get mud turkles? How you gwin to get, em? You can't slip up on um and grab um and how's a body gwin to hit um wid a rock? How could a body do it in de night? And I warned gwin to show myself on de bank in de daytime. Well, that's so. You've had to keep in the woods all the time, of course. Did you hear him shooting the cannon? Oh, yes. I know day was arter you. I see um go by Haya watched um though de bushes. Some young birds come along, flying a yard or two at a time and lighting. Jim said it was a sign it was going to rain. He said it was a sign when young chickens flew that way. And so he reckoned it was the same way when young birds done it. I was going to catch some of them, but Jim wouldn't let me. He said it was death. He said his father laid mighty sick once, and some of them catched a bird. And his old granny said his father would die, and he did. And Jim said you mustn't count the things you are going to cook for dinner, because that would bring bad luck. The same if you shook the tablecloth after sundown. And he said if a man owned a beehive and that man died, the bees must be told about it before sun up next morning. Or else the bees would all weaken down and quit work and die. Jim said bees wouldn't sting idiots but I didn't believe that, because I had tried them lots of times myself, and they wouldn't sting me. I had heard about some of these things before, but not all of them. Jim knowed all kinds of signs. He said he knowed most everything. I said it looked to me like all the signs was about bad luck. And so I asked him if there weren't any good luck signs. He says, Mighty few and day ain't no use to a body. What you want to know when good luck's a comin' for? Want to keep it off? And he said EFU's got hairy arms and a hairy brayas. 
it's a sign dat use aguin to be rich. Well, days some use in a sign like dat. K's it's so fur ahead. You see, maybe you's got to be po. A long time fussed. And so you might get discourage. And kill yo if. F you didn't. No, by design dat you gwin to be rich by me by. Have you got hairy arms and a hairy breast, Jim? What's to use to ax dat question? Don't you see I has? Well, are you rich? No, but I been rich once, and gwin to be rich again. Once I had fourteen dollars. But I tuck to speculatin, and got busted out. What did you speculate in, Jim? Well, fust I tackled stock. What kind of stock? Why, live stock cattle, you know. I put ten dollars in a cow. But I ain't gwin to resk no mo money in stock. De cow up and died on my hans. So you lost the ten dollars. No, I didn't lose it all. I only lost bout nine of it. I sold a hide and taller for a dollar and ten cents. You had five dollars and ten cents left. Did you speculate any more? Yes. You know that one legged nigger dat belongs to old Misto Bradish? Well, he sought up a bank. And say anybody dat put in a dollar would get fo dollars mo at de en er de year. Well, all de niggers went in, but they didn't have much. I was de ani one dat had much. So I stuck out for mo, dan fo, dollars, and I said, F I didn't. Get it I'd start a bank myself. Well, o course dat nigger want, to keep me out er de business. Because he says day warrant business, no for two banks. So he say I could put in my five dollars and he pay me thirty five at de en, er de year. So I done it. Den I reckoned I'd invest a thirty-five dollars right off and keep things a movin. Day was a nigger name, Bob. Dat had catched a wood flat. And his marster didn't know it and I bought it often him and told him to take de thirty-five dollars when de en, er de year come, but somebody stole de wood flat dat night. And next day de one legged nigger say de banks busted. So day didn't. None you v us get no money. What did you do with the ten cents, Jim? Well, I ooze gwin to spend it. But I had a dream. And de dream told me to give it to a nigger name. Balaam Balaam's ass day call him for short ease one er dem chuckle heads, you know. But ease lucky, day say. And I see I warn't lucky. De dream say let Balaam invest de ten cents and he'd make a raise for me. Well, Balaam he tuck de money. And when he was in church, he hear de preacher say dat whoever give to de po, len, to de lord, and bone, to get his money back a hundred times. So Balaam he tuck and give de ten cents to de po, and laid low to see what was gwin to come of it. Well, what did come of it, Jim? Nuffin never come of it. I could en manage to kalake dat money no way and Balaam he could en. I a and gwin to len no mo money. Doubt I see de security. Bone to get yo money back a hundred times, de preacher says. 
EF I could get de 10 cents back. I'd call it squaw. And be glad er de chanced. Well, it's all right anyway. Jim. Long as you're going to be rich again some time or other. Yes, and I's rich now. Come to look at it. I owns myself. And I's worth eight hundred dollars. I wished I had de money. I wouldn't want no mo'.